at the airport ready to go to Oshkosh at Purdue Aviation and unfortunately there's a lot of crosswinds so I have to get really prepared and really precise on what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. but It's gonna be good. She's gonna do great. It's gonna be great guys. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be a little rocky probably. We are headed up to uh, Porter County. To do some traffic pattern work yep. and then we're gonna fly along Chicago and get to Appleton. Yes, to Appleton, where we will finally get our truck so we can drive the rest of the way to Oshkosh because a buddy was kind enough to drive the trailer and truck and left it right there near Appleton. So, that is the game plan for today. Lots of touch and goes and... Really good landings. <laughs> really good landings, totally. That's what's gonna happen. Done it. That would have done it. It was turning, so you can yeah. keep it in there. But you, hang on, just one sec. You didn't actually finish the checklist. What? Does the engine start like that? No. Okay, can you the information? Zero. One five five four Zulu, wind two one zero one zero, gust two three, visibility one zero, ceiling two thousand three hundred broken, temperature three one, two point two five, altimeter two nine or nine or one, on air runway two at approaching use, landing departing runways two eight and two three. As a sweat information available, high one flight service frequencies, use caution for birds and drones within the vicinity of the class delta. Notice so the airman runway one zero path beyond nine degrees weather center line unusable. I'm gonna have to listen again. Runway five, runway two three, runway two three, runway two seven one five, runway two three, 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 runway
Now, let's think, let's slow down here. Yep, All right. the winds are coming. Yes, you're going to have to aim yourself into the wind. So let's maneuver to give ourselves enough space that we're not blocking other aircraft. We're not going to blast any other aircraft with our prop wash. Yeah, exactly. Over to the left, we can spin back into the wind. And then we'll be kind of lined up for the taxiway line. Or we're going to want to turn this airplane around into the wind. So, yep, yep. far over to the left and spin her around to the right. About right now? Uh, I would go a little bit further here. We want to leave enough room for other aircraft coming behind us. Okay. Yep, so I would head all the way over to the grass. Cool, now you can start turning right. Heading for that grass. Keep that right turn going. Oh, okay. Cool, now just keep that right turn going and aim yourself back into the wind to do your run-up. If you look at the windsock and you think you're aligned with the wind, then that's good. Cool. We get our nose gear straightened before we come to a stop and do the run-up. Perfect. Alrighty. Foundation check set. Runway is acceptable. Radio is set. IFR. IFR. Transponder. We have flight falling now. Brake doors. Window secure. Cool. And now, looking at that runway, where would be a good abort point? Remember we want to choose it every time before we get out there? Um... That second windsock or that taxiway across? That taxiway, yeah. That second windsock okay. is really far. That's like 2,500, 3,000 feet, so that's okay. way further. So, yeah, the intersecting runway before then, there's a little taxiway before the intersecting runway, and so we should be off by then. That, not B2, but that next one, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. And, I mean, one way you can always do it is you can see you got the numbers here. You probably got 1,000 foot markers or aiming points down there. Okay. Airplanes shouldn't take more than 1,000 feet on the ground to get off, especially with this much wind. So, yeah, if you see those big... Piano keys pass us, you know, after about, uh, you know, 20 seconds or so, 15, 20 seconds, then probably a good idea to stay on the ground. Okay, transponder check, anti collision light on. Is your strobe, right? Correct. Flaps zero. They are. Tar zero. Mixture rich. Mixture is rich. Fuel pump on. Car peat cold. Hold trim takeoff position. Takeoff clearance obtain. They will do that. Cool. So let's go ahead and go over to tower frequency. And now to make life easy on ourselves, let's put the departure frequency in the standby. So all we have to do when they say contact departure is just simply oh. press the key. Lafayette Tower, Skyhawk 19668, ready to depart runway 23, VFR northbound. Skyhawk 19668, Lafayette Tower, runway 23, clear for takeoff, north turn out approved. Just go. Clear for takeoff, runway 23, north turn approved. Runway 23, northbound, clear for takeoff, northbound turn. Skyhawk 668. 668. Cool. Now, as we taxi out here, I want you to go straight Lafayette towards that little bird or whatever that is, and I want you to cut back and double check if it's clear before you get on the runway. Twenty miles okay. to the east inbound landing with Sierra. Remember, uh, two Bravo Hotel Lafayette. You said you're twenty so miles go to the straight. east. Yeah, Keep going straight. Keep going straight. To the east south east. Now actually. start your left turn. Drop flight following. Nice slow left turn. Don't need Remember, brake. Uh, two Just Bravo use Hotel rudder. Roger. Uh, report. Three miles east. Now use a little bit of left break. traffic runway two three. Left. Three miles east. Let's we'll check the final is clear. Two, three, two We're going to keep her rolling. Final is clear. You are clear for takeoff. Let's get out there on the runway and let's take off. What's your heading going to be on departure? Three four nine. Three forty nine. Exactly. Perfect. I don't back taxi. I just you don't right. back taxi. Yep. You just turn to the right. So we have a direct headwind. Pretty much cool. slight left crosswind, but pretty much right down the pipe. Slight left. All right. Yep. Ready? Ready to go. Power set. Gauges are green. Airspeed is alive. Look down that runway. Right rudder. There you go. I forgot my window. Frick. There. Yep. I was wondering why it was so windy in here. Shoot. Sorry. Just, no, you're fine. Just fly the airplane. A window or a door falling off the airplane is not really that big a deal. Okay. So we're... 
You get up to 500 feet, you go to 25 squared, then you'll turn northbound, you'll contact the parts. You're going to do all that. You'll probably close that window in about two, three minutes. Okay. Just ignore it. Number uh, 19668, contact Griffin Post, good day. Contact approach 668. Cool. For 3,000 direct Oak Ridge. Uh, two miles north. Whiskey Tango, uh, you are loud and clear, thanks. You should be able to just say, uh, yeah, yeah. Whiskey, loud and clear, you're two thanks. miles north of uh, Lafayette, 2,300 for 3,000. For 3,000, okay. Yeah. Or actually, you know what, with the clouds here, I think we're going to be able to climb through a hole. Tell them that you'd like to go at uh, 4,500. 4,700. Yep. Okay. Approach with is 2992. I don't know what approach it is, so just approach. Grissom approach, or you can just Grissom use approach. the word approach. If you want heavy descent to maintain 3,000. Approach Skyhawk 19668, three miles north of Lafayette. 2,600 for 2,500. 2,600 for 4,500. Okay, that's all. Yep. Grayson Approach, Skyhawk 19668, four miles north of Lafayette, 2,800 to 4,500. I should have said northbound. You know, you're fine, you're fine. Getting slow. Just listen for me. Number zero three Yankee, just to maintain 3,000. You're 2,800 for 4,500. Skyhawk 668, Grayson Approach, uh, I don't. Ident 668. Ident 668. Good. NDA 1 heavy, turn left heading 320. Number 668, radar contact 4 miles northwest of Lafayette, maintain VFR. Maintain VFR, 668. Cool. We're going to maintain VFR, right? We're going to stay clear of the clouds and all that. And we're going to fly on course, heading 349, just like you bugged on there with your HSI. Good job. Climbing out 25 squared. Whenever right, you have time, hotel, contact Fort Wayne go ahead and run through a little climb checklist. In route climb, airspeed 90 to 100. Am I still good with 80 or should I go up to 90? Well, let's do 80 until we get that window closed okay. and then we can do 90. Power 25 25, make sure lean as required, fuel pump off. Yep. Power 4, Tango Delta, contact south, then approach 132.5. Can you take the flight controls? Uh, sure, I have the flight controls. Thank you. 13205, sir. NDA-1 heavy, 5 miles from the final approach. Six. Turn left heading 260, maintain air about 2,500 until established. Clear, Alice 23 approach. Secured. Your flight controls. Your flight controls. Cool, we can lower the nose for 90. Number 9, Julian Alpha, contact Chicago Center 132.5. Good day. Skyhawk 66A, what else do you, what do you like to cruise at now? 4,500, 668. Nice 82 heavy, Grissom approach, roger. Your radar contact, two miles off of the... Uh, now you're flying and heading at 349, not there. Yeah. Yeah. But remember we said every five to ten minutes we have to check this guy with our compass. Okay. So what okay, okay. Our heading are we actually flying? 33. So let's turn back to that 349 heading and now that we know we've been flying the wrong heading for a couple minutes. Maybe we can correct for it by flying a 360 heading for three to five minutes and then turning back to the original 349 heading. Okay. On that takeoff, I couldn't, for some reason I was thinking, it's so hard for me to disconnect the aileron to the rudder sometimes sure. that I overthink it. And I was using the left rudder to get back on to the, or to correct for the wind, but that's not how you do that. So that's why that takeoff is a little The bad. rudder just makes your nose go the yeah. direction you want. Yep. Ailerons collect, account for crosswinds. Yep. Exactly. I just dumb for a second. Well, no, it's all right. So when you're taxing around, you know, your ailerons aren't moving at all. Your feet are moving. Pop up there, fly direct, Julia. Accelerating on takeoff is very much the same thing. You're just taxing at a higher, higher, Thank higher you. airspeed until you start flying. And the whole reason we use ailerons on takeoff, you know, into the winds for a little bit of left crosswind there, is because as the airplane begins to fly, the wind could possibly tip the airplane over. And if the airplane's going to tip to the right, we correct for a bank, you know, an unsatisfactory bank angle with aileron. Aileron controls the bank. So if the wind's trying to push the airplane to the right bank-wise, then we use left aileron to correct for that. November 434, Mike Charlie, can you accept 10,000 for an in-route altitude? A left crosswind plus all the left turn tendencies are going to make the little nose want to go left of center line. So it's 
going to take right rudder on any takeoff. Oh, you Plus, going to take extra right rudder on a left crosswind takeoff to keep the nose going straight. Otherwise, if you don't use any rudder on takeoff, especially with the left crosswind, the airplane's going to dart off. 431, right. Mike Charlie, climb maintain 10,000. All of my radio work was fine with approach? Yeah, radio okay. works good. The only thing I will say Thank is, because you. you did it before, too. SA2, heavy turn right, heading 140. You're 2,600 for 4,500. Okay. You're there and you're going to that altitude. It's, I understand in your mind why you'd say 2,600 to 4,500, but he thinks that's like you want that block altitude. You want to be like anywhere in that block. You're okay. like, hey, I'm a, I'm a new pilot here and I can't hold my altitude very well, so I'm going to be plus or minus 1,000 feet here today, guys. Okay. Um, compared to saying, I'm at this <laughs> for, for that. that. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. I'm here and I'm going to the next one. So we're flying along here. We passed uh, over all those windmills. Whiskey, contact okay. Chicago Center, and there's an airport along the route that we should be coming up to. Rent three sealer. We should be, what would you say, about five, six miles to the west of that or to the east of that? About five, six miles. That's our course, right? Okay, yeah. So we should be about five or six miles to the east of, of Rent sealer, Jasper, Jasper County Airport. Yeah. yeah. Mash 8 2 heavy contact tower today. So let's keep an eye out and see if we can find that airport. If I, if I told you you were 10 miles from that airport, so you're 10 miles from the airport right now, how many minutes till you see it? Four, five, correction, six, five, seven, seven, uniform, descent, maintain four. You're about 100 knots airspeed, right? We're not quite sure what our ground speed is because we don't have any GPS. Those winds aloft are coming out of our left, about 20 knots, we had said. So maybe oh, we're, six, six, we're eight, doing about what we Chicago see on. 123.5, good day. 123.5, 668. 132, 132.5, 668. 132.5, 668. Cool. 132.65. 0.5. Bruce, the 90 whiskey, go ahead. Cancel with you. 90 whiskey, cancel. Receive, spot, maintain VFR, radar service, terminate, change, supervisor. Five point five zero. There we go. Little, little further. There we are. Uh. All right. Now the first thing you do when you put it in there, yep, you switch it. So we're out of his sector. Uh, yes. Now okay. we're going to be talking to the next guy. Okay. Um. So the math. We're about a hundred. Oh, let's go ahead and check in with this guy. Okay. Yep. Approach Skyhawk 19668, 4,500. Level 4,500. Yep. Level. You're not climbing or descending. Approach Skyhawk 19668, level 4,500. Option 373 Chicago Center, descend to maintain 9,000. The so can kill to It's actually Chicago Center. Oh. That's okay. What? It's okay. It's Chicago Center. Oh. Not approach anymore. So call again. You can try it again, yep. If he doesn't get back to you within Option another 10 seconds or so. Option 3 is to be descending to 15,300 for 11,000 with Bravo. Delta 381 Chicago Center, climb and maintain 16,000. Any altimeter 2997. No. Or wait, I don't know. Wait for the other person to respond. Okay, now enough time's gone by. He's working two frequencies. November 19668, Chicago goes. Center, the Gary Altimeter 2985. 2985. 2985, 668. There you are. 2985. Option 373, Chicago Center. Now, what did we say by the yesterday? The pressure is dropping as we're flying, so what's happening? We're moving towards weather. Towards bad weather. Yeah, bad weather. Yeah, because the pressure's dropping. Cool. 2989 down to Back to this deal, right? We're doing about 100 knots on the airspeed. We had a little bit of a crosswind, you know, so we're crabbing for it. It's probably going to slow us down ever so slightly. But we're at 4,500, so our true airspeed is probably a little higher than indicated. So let's ballpark and call it 100, right? How many miles per minute is that? Uh, miles per minute? Yep. So we're 5, 6, 1, 4, Romeo, How many miles per minute is 90 knots? 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 5. I don't know. How many miles per minute is 60 knots? 60. How many miles per minute would we go if we're doing 60 knots? I, I, just, I don't know. Okay, if you're doing 60 miles per hour. If you're doing 60 miles in an hour. How many miles are you doing in a minute? 60. 
No, one. One. Yep. If we're doing 60 knots, we're doing one nautical mile per minute. If we're doing 90 knots, we're doing one and a half nautical miles per minute. Okay. Doing 120 knots, two nautical miles per minute. So back there, I had said you were 10 miles away, and you're doing 100 knots. So within about five minutes, I would say it'd be a good idea to start looking for that airport. Okay. We said we were supposed to be about five, six miles to the right of it, to the east of it. 20 degrees left, option 373. Do you see anything that looks like an airport out there? Because it's been about five minutes or so since that last happened. Since we last mentioned that. So number two, two, yes. one, Victor Romeo. Right contact. on that the other side of the city. Three point eight okay. Cool. 123, 10. One, Victor Romeo. Okay. Got an airport over there. So we had passed that airport. Yes. And check your heading there if you're actually on the heading you want to be on. Remember, if you realize that you are erroring, you know, to the left or right of your heading, then you'll have to compensate for that for the same error or the other side for approximately the same amount of time. Okay. So you were just flying for a little bit there, about five degrees to the left, so you might want to go ahead and fly five degrees to the right for the next two, three minutes. Now, the last thing you saw was Jasper Number County, one batter, six, right six, there eight, near... Contact, approach, 132.05. 1320. 13205. Five zero. Frick! One, one, one three two zero five is what he had said. For zero six, six, five. Yep, one three two zero five. Let's go ahead and put that into the radio before you forget it. One three two zero five. Number nine or two there one you go. Yankee Chicago. And let's swap it right away. There you go. So yeah, are you in a cloud? Or are you not in a cloud? I'm How like, can you tell? I'm in light cloud, like very wispy stuff. What? So it's really hazy out in front of me. It's really hazy, so what could you do about that? Descent. Okay, cool, then let's reduce power and descent. Maintain VFR at below 5,500 for some traffic. Maintain VFR 5,500, 668. At or below, you can descend for Valparaiso whenever you'd like. Just at or below 55, please, 668. Below 5,500, 668. At or below, okay. it's your choice. You know, you could go to 5,500 and stay there, or you could go even lower. So obviously we're gonna start descending here soon. Yep. Uh -huh. Now we descend with 15 inches of manifold pressure, so let's set known values. We always set known values to make life easy on ourselves, so let's get it back to 15 inches of manifold pressure. Just let that nose come down. You don't really have to touch on the yoke at all. And let's dial the RPM back so it's not running too hard. About 2300, 2350 would be fine. Remember that as you're descending, the manifold pressure is going to increase, and as you dial back the RPM, manifold pressure is going to increase. What do I do? What do you mean, what do you do? I'm going through a cloud. So I have to find a pocket. Sorry, go ahead. So you're not going through a cloud just yet, so let's fly the airplane. Let's stay focused here, right? Not yet. So where are you going on your heading right now? Really far off. All right, so let's fly that heading. Thank you. For starters. And let's see in that general direction, are there any holes for us to go through, or do we have to get a pop of five bar clearance to go back down? And that's why we never go above clouds as private pilots, unless you have somebody who's next to you that has an instrument rating that can get you through. Nine, nine, seven, I'm going to have to fly that way a little bit because I was off my heading for so long. Okay. Right? Sure. And when we come down, we'd like to come down at about 500 feet a minute. It would be a good descent rate, so let's adjust power to do so. If we're just indiscriminately descending, 500 feet a minute is a pretty good rate One to come down at. Three yet. to 500 feet a minute, yep. Cool. We see some big holes over there that we could possibly fly through, so let's go ahead and go fly towards them. I'm at 5,500, so I'm going to arrest my descent. Well, sure. She said at or below 5,500. Okay. So your discretion, as long as you're below 5,500, totally fine. We're going to go ahead and navigate to a hole here to go ahead and descend down through these clouds. Okay. Otherwise, we'll have to get a pop of five hour clearance to go ahead and go through these clouds. So if we find a hole that's about a mile wide, we can legally do that. So we're 43010, contact south and approach. And you'll want to adjust your power eight accordingly one, to one, eight, five, control five, your five, descent. Zero, one, zero, oh, right five, there. Seven, sure. So just keep watching it. Keep judging eight. how you're descending. So we're nine, four, six, two, back and seven, how much power seven, you want to control your altitude. Eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, I will have an amendment to your routing here when you're ready. If you're descending too much power, if you're not descending enough, reduce power. Two, nine, eight, nine, and hold on. So do you think you'll be able to get through this hole here? Direct. This one, no. Oh, I was going to go that part the next one. Sure. Okay. Just be ready to adjust power as needed, anywhere from full power okay, all the way to idle uh, power. Direct to the or are you thinking Alpha, this one? Papa, Papa, no, uh, you can go in whichever way you want. I want you to navigate the aircraft to and get a feel for what it takes to try to navigate your way through this stuff without getting into it. Okay. Direct. 
Marcus Quebec, uh, read back correct and proceed direct the map when able. That one went to probably the spider choice, but I saw this little opening. Marcus Quebec, Marcus Quebec, Marcus Quebec, Marcus Quebec, Marcus Quebec, We're not 2,000 horizontal. Did you think you were going to be? A little bit, and then I got tinier and tinier. Yeah, the hole always gets kind of smaller as you get closer to it, it seems. Okay. Should I duck down or no? Or just continue and trying to... You fly the airplane to avoid the clouds. Whichever way you need to. Whatever the longest clear air path is, right? So you can turn a little to the right and then turn a little back to the left. You can fly a nice slaloming path through clear air. I'd start turning to the left now. So a little disclaimer here, not a great decision to try to pick your way above clouds and then back down through them as a VFR rated private pilot without an instrument rating, without an instrument equipped aircraft. Now, although we maintain VFR legal minimums from clouds here and we're able to do this, the whole reason I showed the student this is because, well, quite frankly, pilots make bad choices all the time and I'd rather them at least have some experience of how to deal with their bad choices rather than just go out and make the bad choices and then freak out and possibly have an accident from it. So I don't really advocate for students or anyone doing this, but it's an important thing to show all the different options that there really are on the table. Yep, we can always make the hole bigger by making a curving path. And then once I get a little bit below, I'm going to arrest my descent. Sure, and we can start turning back on course. Good, now we're below the clouds and we got great visibility yeah, below here. About, uh, actually, you know what, for now maintain 7,000, I guess. Um, what what altitude would you like to go down to? Like at 8,000, they want to keep you at 7, so my apologies. 2,500? Sure, that sounds good to me. What's the ground height around here? A lot lower, probably 600, 700. Okay, yeah, that's a good guess. We could always look at the map and say, uh, what's the ground height for uh, Porter County? 770. Cool. So about how, how, how high AGL are you? 1,000. 1,200. Oh, now I'm not anymore. Well, if you were 2,500 feet and the ground's about 800 feet, how high would that be? 2,500. We said we we're going to stop at 2,500, right? So let's level off at 2,500. So if the ground's 800 feet and you're at 2,500, how high is that? Um, 1,200. No. Okay, 1,700. 1,700. Yep. Now, what heading would you like to be on here? 349. Well, 349, but didn't we just cut over by about 3, 4 miles to the left? So maybe we need to cut about 3, 4 miles to the right. Just that dead reckoning, right? Trying to figure out roughly where do you feel like you are in space and can you find this airport? You know, so what are we going to look for? We got a little town just yeah. to the northwest of the airport. We have, looks like railroad tracks that run in there to the okay. airport. Do we have any thing that we could follow that if we found off our right that we could follow northbound to. Power lines? Yeah, we got some power lines that run north and there's some uh, big tall antennas that run along them, about oh, about four or five hundred foot tall antennas. Now what else are you trying to be at here? Okay, so you want to be at 2,000, that's fine. You're going to be 500 feet below the clouds at least, so cool. I just want to stay on the same page with what altitude we're trying to be at. So let's hold 2,000. And then now that we've descended, should we do anything with our mixture? So we're looking for some power lines that run north-south. There are power lines here. Okay. Do they run north-south? Bonanza 70, Quebec. Contact Chicago Center, 132.5. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can try following those then. If we look here, could they be any other power lines? Are there any other power lines five or six miles offset that run north-south that could, you know, be taking us to the wrong place? No, I don't see any. Okay. 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 Yeah, so it looks but like if we, if we follow these power lines. Oh, there's these, but those aren't the same, okay. So we got these ones that run north-south, so let's just follow these power lines that run north-south. And just keep them, you don't have to be on top of them, you can put them where you see them, right? Put them just off your left-hand side. I see power lines coming this way. Diagonal across. Six, six, eight. Yeah. Radar service terminated. Squawk VFR. Frequency change approved. No traffic observed between you and the Valparaiso Airport. Is that us? Yep. I don't know what to say. 
And we'll uh, squawk via far and frequency change proof for Skyhawk 19668. Good day. Squawk via far and frequency change proof. No traffic observed between you and the Valparaiso Airport. Squawk and VFR from change approved, 668, good day. Let's go ahead and squawk VFR. And what frequency do we want to be on for the airport? 12272. Okay, let's dial that in there. Cool, and is there any sort of weather station there? It's ASOS 125, wait, can I, 12587, 125. Yep, careful with how much meat you get on that yoke because as you're leaning forward, you're pushing the airplane down. One, two, eight, eight, seven. One, two, five, point, eight, seven. Keep glancing that altitude, looking over the nose. Still see your power lines? No, okay, no. Where'd they go? I think they ended, or they're way over there. I okay, see power lines crossing so let's, let's fly the airplane. We want to be at 2,000 feet, so let's keep flying the airplane. Let's maintain an altitude that we want to be at. 2,000 feet, we said, right? Yes. What altitude are you at? 1,800. Okay, what can you do about that? Bumping in a little bit of power and going up, sure. Let's go ahead and try to get some weather for the airport. The municipal airport, Valparaiso, Indiana. Automated weather observation, 1724 Zulu, wind 230 at 11, visibility 10, sky condition few 2500, broken so are you gonna write down the weather at all? Yeah, I was. Broken 6500, temperature 32 Celsius, dew point 24 Celsius, altimeter 29er, niner, zero, remarks, Density altitude 3,000 and 6,500. So you can't, Zero. can't hear it anymore, right? Because we're getting farther away, and so we have to pull out the squelch, right? Porter County Municipal there Airport, go. Valparaiso, Indiana. Automated Valparaiso, Indiana. Automated weather observation. Two, I, I'm. Port of Traffic, one of them is zero, base two seven, Port Johnny. Zero. Sky condition two, two thousand five hundred. Right and and broken three thousand two hundred. Broken six thousand five hundred. Temperature three two Celsius. One zero. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that off here for a second. That's not really doing us any good, it seems, right? No. So we got the altimeter setting, so we know how high we are. All right, so let's start there. Now, we see the lake ahead of us, right? Port of traffic lake. For November Sierra. What's ahead of us? Is this a shoreline? Is this? It's a power plant. There's a power plant, okay. So there's a power plant ahead of us. Yeah. Is there land or water ahead water. of that? Water. Okay, there's water ahead of that. So can you look at this map then while you're flying so you can put the pen and paper away? I just want you to try to figure out where you are. We're way north of it. Okay, so you're north of it. Now notice that as we were flying, right, that at first you could hear it with the squelch on and then you, you, couldn't. Lo you couldn't, so you're getting farther away and you had to turn the squelch off to actually be able to hear. So that was your first clue, you're getting farther from the airport instead of closer to it. Okay. So we got the lake shore. Now let's look at that map and knowing what you know about navigation, right? Yeah. How can you find your way to the airport? Turn 180 degrees. Okay, around. so we can turn 180 degrees, so cool. Let's start with that. But let's look at this power plant and let's find yeah. that on the chart. So let's get a, right a hard here. fix of where we are. We're like literally right here. Point to me. Or above Chestertown. Okay. That's what I'm guessing because the power lines. So there's the power lines, okay. And uh, we've got a bunch of towers and stuff. Yep. So. Oh, right there. Okay. So then let's, do you want to turn 180 to the left or to the right? To the left, because there's less towers. Oh, uh, well, you're not going to hit the towers, you're both. So just as far as getting to the airport, do you think you have to fly straight south or, or like 170, 190? What heading is it going to be to get to the airport? 170, so turn to the left. It would make a little more sense to turn to the right, correct? Turning to the right. 
would give you more of a 170 heading, that's 170. And then go ahead and bug the heading that you want to roll out on to remind yourself. So let's go ahead and bug a 170 heading. Now, what else on this chart is going to tell us where we are? The big interstate. The big interstate, cool. So we got a big interstate, that's really helpful. So is there a big interstate that runs towards the airport? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and try to find that big road. What about other navigational instruments we have in the airplane besides GPS? The ground. We have the ground. Houses, lakes, towers, water towers. What is this guy? VOR. Okay, they can help us get places, right? The highway south is right there. Okay, cool. Let's go link up on it. You fly with it just off your left-hand side. Now, how many miles south of the lakeshore would you say the airport is? 20. Uh, yeah, maybe more like 12, 10 or 12. So how long will it take us to cover 12 miles? I, I don't know. I don't know how to do that right Let's now. Let's just round it up to 120 and call it six minutes. So six minutes from the lakeshore to get down here. Now, do you see, if you look out your left window there, you see that intersection? Yeah. See two big highways inter intersecting? Do you see that on the map here? See two big highways that intersect? Right there. Right there, cool. So if we fly south along the highway, we know we're right there now. So now, how many miles do we have to go to the airport? Seven, eight. Yeah, sure. Six, seven miles, something like that. So six or seven miles should take us, what, about three, four minutes? So about three or four minutes we should see this airport. We should be right over top of it if we follow this highway. Could we make a radio call now that we know exactly where we're at? We're six miles north of the airport. Porter County traffic, Skyhawk 19668. Traveling southbound, about four miles north of the airport at... 2,900 feet. Order County traffic. Okay, and how high are you? 2,900. You're 2,900? 1,900. 1,900, okay. Order County traffic, Skyhawk 973, Hotel Alpha, the parking area to the north of Porter County. That traffic heading north out of Porter County, what else did you get? The one on base. No, the traffic heading north out of Porter County, what else are you going at? Uh, we're at uh, 1,500 right now. All right, we're about four miles north and down at 1,900. Keep an eye out. All right, so you see the highway. See how it's bending off to the left? So just try to keep it in sight so we don't lose track Porter of it. Porter County traffic, Pacer 7369 or Kilo, approximately 10 to the southeast, 2,600 inbound for landing, Porter County. What? Uh, Porter County traffic, what of over here, final 27. What is the County. field or the track pattern altitude here? 77, so 1,700. Yeah, 1,800. If it's 770, probably round up to uh, 1,800. Oh. Yep, round up to 800, then add 1,000. So we're right at traffic pattern altitude. Yep. We'll keep a sharp eye out for anybody else. What runway are they using here? Plane. Off to the left, 11. Yep, that's the one that's going outbound. What runway were they using here? I wasn't, I, I don't know. Okay, where were the winds coming from? 2-1. Okay. And I see the airport. Got the airport, cool. So we're probably gonna be making left traffic then for runway traffic, one eight right, if they're coming from two one zero. We don't want to fly right through the smack in the middle of the traffic pattern because we're right at traffic pattern altitude right now. So let's go ahead and go to twenty five squared and go up five hundred feet so that we can cross over the airport. We remember we raised the RPM first, twenty five hundred RPM and then twenty five inches manifold pressure. We'll go 500 feet above traffic pattern altitude. So that'll be 2,300. We'll cross over the field. Let's look down at the wind socks. Let's verify it. No need to even listen to the ATIS again, right? Or the AWOS. We already got the altimeter. It's not gonna have changed much in the last 10 minutes. We just wanna look down and see what the wind socks are doing. We wanna see what all the other traffic in the pattern is doing as well. Are we overflying the airport? We're gonna overfly the airport so you can see the wind socks. So maneuver the aircraft however you need to to be able to look down and see the wind socks and decide which runway you'd like to use and try to notice if there's any other aircraft in the pattern. You could probably make a radio call whenever you get a chance, but you're overflying the field at 2,300. Porter County Regional, Skyhawk 19668, overflying the mid midfield at 2,300. Porter County Regional. Traffic. You're fine, relax. Yeah, Porter County traffic overflying the field. What direction are you headed at 2,300? Southeast, Skyhawk 
Six six eight. Uh, you're fine. That's good. I... Yep, you're good. Roger. I am northwest bound two thousand five hundred, uh, approximately five miles southeast of the field. We'll look for you. We'll keep an eye out for you. All right. So looking down, do we see any wind socks? No, I see a tetrahedron. Okay. What runway is it favoring? One eight. It's favoring runway 18, okay. I can right. tell you there's an uh, airplane in the pattern, and the windsock was kind of favoring runway 27, and there's an airplane in the pattern for runway 27. So she's crosswind, so let's go ahead and maneuver to join the left downwind for runway 27. So teardrop in? Exactly, yep. So we'll turn to the right, we can start descending. And you can let everyone know you're about a mile to the southeast of the field, descending out of 2300 to join the left downwind. We're a mile south. So you're a mile southeast, and you're going to be leaving 2300 to join the left downwind for runway 27 behind the other traffic. Porter County traffic, Skyhawk 19668, a mile southeast of the tr of the field, joining the left downwind for runway 21, Porter County traffic. 27. We're going to wait for that other traffic to turn onto the downwind. Porter County traffic, that's the one November Sierra is uh, left downwind for 27. And where was the other traffic? See the airport, just tell her where you are. Porter traffic, Skyhawk 19668, two miles south of the airport at 1800. We'll wait for you to get across before we join the traffic pattern in Porter County. We got you in sight. Cool, so let's go ahead and make that right turn. Do you have her in sight? No. Nope. I do. So you turn right here. We're going to join the left downwind, that 45 degree angle. Bring in a little power here so we can stop our descent. Stop them descent with the power and also a little yeah, bit of pitch. Pull back traffic, a little bit of the turn. Holding 1,800. Uh, approximately 5 to the southeast over La Crosse. 2,600 inbound for landing, quarter counting. Now do you have the traffic in sight? Yes. Perfect. We're following her. Let's try to stay at 1,800 here, keeping 21 inches at least in there and a little bit of back pressure as you're in that turn to hold your altitude up. Good. Our midfield left downwind for runway 27 at Porter County. Porter County traffic, Skyhawk 19668, left midway down, left downwind, midway 27, Porter traffic. All right. And we're our beam, our touchdown point. So we can do our flow. Yep, that wind's coming out of the south, so a little bit, so it's pushing you towards the runway, so maybe crab to the right, so you don't get pushed into the runway, so you don't get too tight of a traffic pattern going on there. Seven at Bravo, we're going to depart and we'll be clearing northwest. Alright, let's give ourselves some room there and take your time. They're passing us on final now, so you can turn your base whenever you'd like, but no rush. We're just flying the airplane at 70 knots. 40 can you the King's one of the here is final for 27, 40 can About how far do I want to be from her? Oh, she's already passed you, so you can turn your base whenever you'd like. You're plenty far from her. It's just about giving yourself enough room, whatever you feel like you need. Finals clear. We'll announce that we're left base for runway 27 at Porter County. Porter County traffic, Skyhawk 19668, left base for runway 27, Porter County traffic. Cool. 20 degrees of flaps on base. Good job. Looking at that runway. Got that little bit of a tailwind on base here, so we'll start our turn early so we don't overshoot. Watching your speed. Nice, and this is a real long runway. You got all the time in the world. No need to rush. Porter County traffic, Taser 7369 or Kilo, approximately three miles south of the field. Gonna enter a 45 to left downwind 27, Porter County. Set that nose where you want it. Just because you put the flaps in and the nose wants to come up, don't let it do it. Control the airplane. Set that nose where you want it. Yep, right there. Perfect. That'll give you 70. Let that nose down. Let the nose down. Keep 70 in there. Let the nose down. Now you can tell you're getting a little low. It's just a small bump of power. Good. Let's straighten out the nose with right rudder here. Lower the nose. 
Right rudder, left aileron. Good. Nice job. Looking down that runway. Carrying that power in. Perfect. Good. Holding it just like this. Nice. Starting to reduce some power now. Letting the airplane come down. Letting the airplane come down. Letting the airplane come down. Right rudder and left aileron. Right rudder. Right rudder. Right rudder. Left aileron. Right rudder. Powered idle. Left aileron. Right rudder. Keep that nose going straight. Gentle on the rudders. Nice and easy. Good job. And we'll roll to the next turn there, which looks like it'll be the runway. And we'll turn left onto runway 3618. And we'll head over to the fuel pump. Good job. So a little bit of a challenging flight, but still really good experience. I mean, obviously you can talk about lost procedures and teach your student what to do if they do get lost, or you can actually just let them get lost and then figure it out on their own and help coach them through it. A little bit more stressful, but you know, learning is supposed to be very active and vivid, right? I mean, that's what the FAA tells us. And hopefully that experience will help Carly later on in her piloting career. We went ahead and got some fuel here at Valparaiso, Porter County. Pretty cool little FBO that we were able to walk around, check out inside, kind of decompress for a little bit, get some air conditioning and debrief the flight, talk about some things, and then decide to head back out into the pattern before heading on northbound towards Appleton to try to rebuild a little bit of confidence there, do a little bit of pattern work, get Carly feeling good and confident, and then head on up north, flying past Chicago and onward into Appleton finally to then get in the truck and drive to Oshkosh. So hopefully you guys find this video series helpful. I know it is not the most interesting or exciting or colorful like us flying around Alaska and some of the other videos we post and is not the most professionally organized educational series out there, but this is real world flying with a real world student about 20, 25 hours spread out over the course of better than a year, a little more than a year before we actually started off on this trip in Florida flying up to Oshkosh. So this is real world flight instruction. This is how it actually goes. It's okay to get flustered. It's okay to get frustrated. And this this is really what it looks like, especially when you're undertaking a big cross-country flight like this. So hopefully you're picking up little tidbits along the way and learning some things. We have one more part for you, and we will see you guys in day three, part two, the final leg of the journey up to Oshkosh.